Welcome everybody! Today I'm going to build a custom workstation for 3D graphics, specifically Blender and video editing. There's gonna be unboxing, hardware review, software configuration and troubleshooting. Let's start with the list of components I picked for this build. An AMD Ryzen 7, it's a 3700X. Motherboard is gonna be an MSI MPG chipset X570. Graphic card RTX 2070 Super. It's another MSI and is called Gaming Gaming X Trio, something like that. My RAM is gonna be a Dominator Platinum from Corsair, 32 gigabytes. My case is gonna be a Fractal Design Focus G, powered by a 750 watt RM750X from Corsair. Some additional fans from Fractal Design and the keyboard from Logitech the G413 carbon thermal paste and a choice of storage. I pick up three different storage for a specific reason, price mainly, but the fastest one, it's an NVMe. It's a PCI super fast that I'm gonna use for the operating systems. Then I have a Seagate 500 gigabytes Barracuda. It's an SSD and I'm gonna use it mainly for caching and other operations that require a very fast hard drive. Then I have a two terabyte uh, serial ATA, again, Seagate Barracuda, that it's mainly storage. The box, it's very sturdy, which is very good for transportation. comes with a very handy user guide. I must say the case look quite nice. Um, it's lighter than I thought, but very sturdy. It's actually very solid, solid feeling. Uh, the surface, it's a classic old school case. It's metal, clearly, and it's hard. I like it. I like, I like the feel a lot. I really like the white design, but I wasn't sure it was going to be very plasticky. Instead, it's a very classic um, kind of um, light, light gray. It's a classic mid tower with a big window on the side, and it comes with seven classic slots on the back. Let's check them out. First thing I noticed, which is actually very welcome, those screws that are that don't need a screwdriver to be unscrewed, they don't fall off. They have a safe on the other side. They are slightly larger. I don't know if you can see this. So they don't fall off and you don't lose them. They don't go around. Great. Inside, as you can see, there are already two fans installed, but I will add some more probably on the top and, of course, on the back. There's a nice little box here. Let's see what's inside. Inside the box, there are a bunch of uh, screws for all your components and the motherboard and some cable ties. Next step, it's our PSU, which is going to feed our system with a lot of power. Again, some manual, what we have inside, protection, fully modular PSU, that means that all the cables can be detached separately. So normally you may have a PSU with all the cables coming from one single point and they cannot even 
be detached. In this case, we can decide what to add depending on what we need in our computer. Nice looking. Again, we have more cable ties and we have also a great sticker. Where I'm gonna put the sticker? Power cord. And this is what I like of good brands. They are not only very reliable piece of equipment, but they also come with solutions like this. It's probably, doesn't cost much for a company to build, make a bag with all the components in, especially because I'm not gonna use them all. So where I'm gonna store them? This is the solution. Well done, Corsair. It comes with this sticker saying, silent operation allow to moderate loads. We'll see. I'm going to remove the other panel too on the other side so we have full access to the case. The other side of the case, very clean and the build quality is very good. There's no rough edge. And also the top has a couple of interesting connections. Reset button, power on off, uh, microphone, headphones, a USB 2, I guess, and another 3. Minimal, but all I need really. It comes with a handy filter on the bottom. It's not magnetic, you need to just bend it a little bit. And I'm going to install our PSU in the classic position. You want the fan to face the bottom because the hair will come from outside, will be sucked up from this fan and will get outside directly from the back of the PSU. There's only one way this PSU can be mounted because the screw holes aligned only in one position, so you cannot do big mistakes here. You want to hold it from the inside of the case while you screw. What I do is always screw a little bit, not completely. Once all of them are in place, you can tighten. Yeah, it's not gonna move. Let's unbox the motherboard. Let's see what's in the packaging. We have cables, we have the Wi Fi antennas, serial ATA cables, stickers for the serial ATA cables, that's very handy. Another fancy true gaming stickers. A CD, I don't know where I'm gonna use this CD because I don't have any player of CD anymore. We have manual, we have instructions, and we have a mysterious screw. Oh, okay, this one is the screw for the hard drive, for the M2 hard drive. It's better I don't lose it. I decided to go with the 570 chipset instead of the 450, but this one is an entry level. Looks nice, doesn't have any LED, it's all black, dark grey and black, as a fun, nice fun here. And the only reason why I picked up this is because it has a specific chipset for audio. Um, for audio editing, for example, will be very handy. As you can see from the back, as a PS2 mouse and keyboard that I'm not gonna use, maybe. There are a couple of USB 2, there are four SB3, there is an HDMI, USB-C, and all the audio connection, but mainly there's the Wi-Fi included, so I don't have to use one PCI for a Wi-Fi card. I'm going to eventually have two 
graphic card, not in this build, but in the future I want to add another one. I want this motherboard to be as clean as possible. Next part we're going to put together are the CPU and the RAM. After that we can put the motherboard into the case. Nice black box. We have here our CPU. Hey, hey, another sticker. Installation instructions. It's important that whenever you feel lost, whenever you are not sure what you're doing, read the instructions. Along with the CPU, you can buy them separately, but I bought a CPU in bundle with a great fun. The fun name is uh, Wrath Prism, if you want to buy this separately, but there are so many options on the market, so you may want to buy something else, something with a different design probably. It's massive, actually I've never seen something this big. It's got already paste, thermal paste on the bottom of it. It looks quite nice actually, the right as a pattern, it's not like a drop in the middle and then will just spread. It should feel the surface of the CPU easily. And we have the cables, probably for the RGB. It's worth mention that the Ryzen 7 has an AM4 socket, so you need to double check that your motherboard is actually compatible with the AM4 socket. To fit the CPU, there is a lever here, just lift it 90 degree. And let's open our CPU pocket. On the bottom of the CPU, in one corner, there is a mark. And you have the same mark on the CPU socket. The mark means also that there is one pin less there. You cannot really mount this in any other way. So in my case, this triangle aligns with this bit. So I'm gonna very carefully put the CPU in place and then lock it down. Clicked. CPU installed. The heatsink and fan are one piece. You can probably detach it, but they come all together. On one side there are the connectors for the RGB. And there's also a selector, I can see high and low. Let's start with low and let's see what are the temperature before. Here. And the way you want to install it, it's to fix one of the side and then use this lever to tighten up. Then once one side it's in place, the other side can go down because the lever is off and then you can the lever on the other side. And now the heatsink is secured with the fan in place. Don't forget to connect the fan to your motherboard. It's easy, there's a there's a text on the motherboard saying CPU fun 1. Yes, I decided to invert the, the fun direction, the heat sink, so the logo is facing down instead of up. It was weird. 
and don't forget again to reattach the fan cable. It's going to install our RAM, like the packaging, minimal. This one it's some kind of foam. And it comes from the back. There's no manual. You want to install the RAM in the first two slots. Again, there's no way to make big mistakes here. We need to open the side. And then the slot on the RAM, it's not exactly center. So it gives you automatically the position to install the RAM. And once it's in, it will click. And that's it. These are two by 16 gigabytes, so 32 gigabytes in total. And the clock is 3200, if I'm not wrong. Yes, 3200 megahertz. I'm going also to install before putting the motherboard with the components in the case, this, which is gonna be my operating system drive. It's one terabyte Sabrent and it's a NVMe, so it's an M2 standard solid state drive, an SSD, and it's apparently supposed to be very, very fast. So check it out. I hope it's gonna be faster than me trying to unpack this damn box. It comes with a very, <laughs> that's a very stylish plastic case with a tiny manual and I'm not quite sure what is this. Rocket Q. Mm. And here is one terabyte of SSD super fast hard drive. Can't believe it's on a drive, this one. Okay, so here's the position for this hard drive. The M2 socket is here. And there should be another socket, which is actually, it's down here. Okay, it's protected by this. So I'm gonna remove this and install the main drive down there must be a reason why it's here and I believe that the fan is blowing hair so the flow of hair goes into this drive and keeps this um, cooler so this one is very open and there's a lot of air coming off the case fan but this one is a special cooling which is actually very good because this one is gonna be constantly working so I'm gonna remove this and install it there very heavy it's metal and it feels good so this bit on the bottom it's a soft pillow to hold in place the drive again the drive has a, a small notch so there's only one direction possible and we need a small screw that came actually with the motherboard And then we're gonna put back our heatsink. I think we can call this heatsink. It's now time for the motherboard to be installed inside the case. Now you probably cannot see, but on the frame of the case, there are letters that indicates the layout of the screws. So in my case, my motherboard is an ATX and there is a sign saying A-ATX. So I need to add a standoff in each A signed hole. The standoffs came with the case 
So standoffs installed, but I don't know if you can see that they were covered in, uh, well, they were coated in black paint. That means that they were slightly thicker than the bore. So some of the paint went off just trying to tighten them. Uh, so Fractal, please, next time give us just normal standoff. It took me a while to just add six of them. And here is the motherboard in place. There's a standoff on the case and it's soldered to the case that basically click onto the motherboard. There is a hole on the motherboard just here in the center and all the rest of the holes are exactly in the right spot. Still plenty of space all around and we can start to screw the motherboard in. As usual, don't tighten any screw until you are sure of the position, so just tighten a little bit. It's not the biggest case, it's a mid tower, but it fits a full ATX board like this easily, and hopefully the airflow is gonna be okay. The plan is having these two fans sucking from the front there's a filter in front so the air will come here where there will be the graphic card this one is blowing air out there will be another fan here that will basically blow the air out of the case so the flow is like this it will do like this but there will be also two fans here that will suck the air out so these two are the main one, and then from here they will get out. PCU has its own system, so it gets air from the bottom and out from the back, so it should be quite cool. And we'll see with the graphic card what's gonna happen. Now, with other motherboards, you may want to check that you have the right mask for all the I.O. So, in this case, the motherboard had already the mask embedded, so you didn't have to change anything on the back. The only thing missing now, apart from the hard drive and the fans and all the cabling, we will install the graphic card. Now it's worth mentioning that this case allowed to install one hard drive on the back of the PSU, I don't see how this is gonna be a smart choice. I have plenty of space, I can install two here, another two here, so and they have the M2 that goes in the motherboard, so eventually you can install another one here. There's really no reason to have one on the back. Very important component, our main core for what concerns working in real time with 3D. So elegant. Okay, we have a bunch of stuff, instruction. Um, Lucky the Dragon Computer Workshop, I don't know what's this, it seems to be a comic. Nice touch. I wonder where's my sticker. This is very important and very appreciated. It's a bracket to support the weight of the graphic card. It's a very long graphic card, so it needs some kind of extra support, otherwise it will sag. And here is the massive graphic card. I can see that I never seen a 2070 this big. I know there are many, but I never handled one. I only had a 2080, 2080, and it's this big. And the main reason I pick up the long uh, format, because it comes both in with two fans or with three, they're also different sizes. 
It's because they run at a lower speed, therefore it's less noisy. But it also allows you to boost the clock a bit more because you can cool the GPU better with three fans instead of two and with such a big heatsink. The reason why I bought this specific model is because it allows to link another card and use them with the NVLink, so you can have two of them in the same computer. I believe this graphic card requires two slots, plus another two if you want to add the bracket. So let's see how it goes. Yeah, I opened the wrong one. Just slide the graphic card in the slot. It's heavy. I must say it's quite rigid. So maybe I don't need the bracket, but it's nice having the option. And let's check how it works with the bracket. Let's see first if we need the bracket. I must say that doesn't move much. Seems to me very solid solution. I want to see how the bracket will work. So this will go here and we'll push on the plastic. Are you gonna give really any support? Support should come from, from here, that would make sense. Some kind of spacer. But what about this? At the moment I will leave it without because I need access to all the pins on the motherboard when I do the cabling and once we finish we can decide. Storage. Let's remove these two. Install my hard drive, 500 gigabytes, and here is my two terabyte storage. Very light too. These are going to be inserted from the front, from here, and I don't want any cable to be visible on this side. So I'm gonna mount them this way. It's actually quite nice. It doesn't need screws. That's done. Amazing. Seems to be very solid. I don't think it needs more screws. You don't need to have four screws for such a tiny hard drive. But I rather have no vibration at all. And at this point, you can just load them in. The reason I'm putting the hard drive, the bigger one, on the top, it's because the fan is right in front of it, so it will keep it a bit cooler. And also the heat, if I put the non-SSD on the bottom, it will, the heat will go up to the SSD one, so it's better having the SSD on its own, with a lot of air around. Here we have more fans, about a 12 centimeter from the back, which is the same of the front one. These are just white. The front one are the same size, but they come with an LED. Remember to check what's the flow you need. There's the rotation indicated, not that you need the rotation, but you need to know the flow. So in this case, I want the air to go out. So it just need to go this way. I also bought two 14 centimeter for the top. It's the same model, just slightly uh, bigger, which means it just rotates slower, it makes less noise. Same thing for these ones. I want the air to go 
out that way so the flow is gonna be that way. In order to put the fan that are 14 I need to unscrew the filter that we will then put it back. Here this one. And now we're gonna substitute these screws with the longer ones coming with the fans because we are not gonna go through the case, the filter and then to grab the fans. This one goes on top like this. Tricky but not impossible. First one is done. If you want to go to water cooling, you can install a radiator, both in the front or in the top, or install here just 12 cm instead of 14. I'm going to pass the cable on the back. Next time I'm going to install this before the motherboard. Actually, I thought there was going to be much more space, but I was wrong. So it's getting tricky. Still not impossible, but it would be much easier if you do this while the motherboard is not in the way. I realized actually that I mounted the RAM wrongly. In fact, if you have only two, you need to have alternate from this one, which is called A2, and then B2, so they are coupled. It's easy to replace here. So if you have only one, you mount in the second one. And then if you have two, second and fourth. I wasn't sure, but the quick start clearly show that you have to use DIM A2 first and then DIM B2. And then of course, if you have four, there's no problem. But if you have only one DIM A2, and if you have two DIM A2, B2. And here is how it looks like a few hours later. I have to struggle a lot, especially with the top two fans cables, because they were a bit short, so originally I wanted the cable to go from the back, but as they were too short, I only managed to have one to go on the back, but at the end of the day it's clean enough, and not many cable here on the front. All the fans are connected here. We connected the fan from the CPU heatsink. Let's have a look at the back. I could do some tidy up of the cables. Probably I don't need to do much, um, mainly because it's the side that is gonna be hidden. There's no window on the side. So I will try just to put this cable a bit all together so that they're not visible from the front. It's just this ribbon cable that needs to disappear. Is it gonna explode? Okay, now our build is complete and we're going to unpack the keyboard and do some software configuration. This is the unpacking of the G413 Carbon from Logitech. The reason why I picked up this keyboard is because Logitech is a brand I trust. I have several keyboards from Logitech in the past. It's a very reliable brand. But also, this specific model comes with the number keypad that is very useful for shortcuts, to having more shortcuts across the whole layout so you're not limited to this part but this really makes a difference when you can combine the two it's so much easier both for blender video editing in general there is a led backlit also it comes with cable it's a braided cable so very good quality again sturdy 
it's long and I have a USB here so I will have a USB handy close to where I work. In the packaging you can find the usual couple of leaflets and instructions but also uh, something else here. Oh, that's quite cool. The keys on the keyboards are almost flat. They have some kind of curvature, but it's not pronounced. Very nice feeling. And it's a mechanical keyboard, so has a proper feedback. Well, the spare have a different profile so you can detect them easily. It's very solid, really, really nice feeling. And we are in. So here are the fans and my pump connection on the motherboard is actually attached to a normal uh, fan. I set all the fans working with the smart fan mode instead of having a fixed RPM and now I must say the PC is basically silent. They will increase speed only when the temperature rises. These are the temperature with the system idle. This one is the graphic card, 39 degree. This is my hard drive, the system hard drive, 37. Then we have 60 on the chipset, it's a bit high, I must say. And then we have CPU 39, still very, very low, and system 38. Overall, it's a very low temperature. Before starting anything else, I'm going to update the BIOS. So I downloaded the BIOS from the website of MSI. And then we have here USB to flash the BIOS, flash mode, yeah. Restarting. I have no idea what is gonna be the flash mode. Flash mode, okay. I found the USB drive, and this is gonna be. The version of the motherboard. Yes. Do not shut down or restart. Okay, that's fine. Here we have a progress bar. It's taking ages. Seventy-one percent. We can do it. Just a quick recap. From the front, we have two fans that will suck air, will then blow the air this way. The CPU will blow air out of the CPU. The back fan will blow air out of the case, as well as the two fans on the top that will just blow air out of the case. Also we have three fans on the graphic card that are actually blowing air on the heat sink and the air comes out of the bag of the graphic card and the PSU flow it, it's from the bottom where the air comes in and it goes out from the back. Meanwhile, we are 93% and 100. 
and we start it again. Back in the BIOS, let's see that all the settings seems to be gone. It's time to do some testing. So here I'm downloading Blender Benchmark on Ubuntu. The benchmark has started and we're almost done. I'm testing now the optics. So the rendering via the graphic card. So I run the same test on Linux. This is the result, no bad, 6%. Um, in the top 6% the results uh, of my graphic card. And let's check the other results. And this is Windows. And it's actually top 5%. And this is with normal settings on the graphic card. Um, I'm gonna try to boost a little bit the settings to see if I can rank even higher. A few final considerations. I've been running Windows and Linux for a couple of days now. Linux is not performing as good as Windows. It's not, the difference is not big, but it's noticeable. Uh, in the benchmark it's visible, so it's there. I much prefer Linux user interface but I will stick with Windows for the time being. And mainly the reason is that on Linux, at least on Ubuntu, um, not only the performances of Blender were not as good as in Windows, but also I couldn't install DaVinci Resolve, which is the video editing software I use. And this is a big problem for me. I will have to use a different uh, distribution of Linux to, in order to use uh, DaVinci Resolve, and I don't want to. Uh, because Ubuntu is the uh, most mm, most frequently updated uh, distribution of Linux. Um, troubleshooting wise, I really didn't have any problem at all. Assembly the computer was fairly easy, apart from the uh, cable routing that was really really annoying. But it wasn't that hard. There's plenty of space in this case, and the final result is uh, quite clean. I spent probably most of my time trying to fine-tune the uh, fan control um, and I did everything uh, through the BIOS of the motherboard. The only issue that I really had was trying to make Windows and Linux live at the same time, on the same machine, on the same hard drive, mainly because I installed Linux first and in order to have Linux and Windows, the best option is always to install Windows first and then Linux. It's important to notice that you want to use a file system that is most compatible with Linux. And in this case, you want to use a partition table instead of a master boot record partition. It's a technicality, but uh, the motherboard is actually very good in uh, let you select what kind of um, file system you want to start with. I am quite happy with the result. The machine is snappy and I will start working more intensively in the coming weeks. So my next tutorials will be done on this machine. My next projects will be uh, rendered on this machine. I'll leave you the link of the configuration here below if you're curious to, to check what uh, components I exactly use to build this workstation. If you have any question about my configuration or the components itself, uh, please leave a comment below. Of course, subscribe to this channel. I will post more content about Blender, not just tutorial. Um, I have in program a number of um, let's say business related to a Blender, how can you uh, get the most out of the software, how can you build a career around the software and how Blender channels do on YouTube. So I'll see you next time, it's all for now, ciao.